Hello everyone, uh, very good afternoon to people in India and a very good morning to people in Europe. And today we have our uh, 11th webinar in the knowledge series of India EU ICT standards cooperation. And today's topic is very interesting as some of you might have noticed it is testing framework for IoT privacy. And uh, in the current uh, scenario, privacy as we are uh, you know discussing here is also being debated in eu it's also being discussed in india so it's a very uh, appropriate webinar topic and today i'm very fortunate to have uh, three people with us which is dr mukesh upal who is a director from com first dr mahesh upal is director of com first a niche consultancy company based in delhi the company in telecommunication and internet policy regulation and strategy. And Dr. Upal was educated at Delhi Public School, St. Stephen's College, IIT Kanpur, and City University London. He has carried out academic research in several major institutions in India and the United Kingdom. These include the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, the University of Cambridge, and the University of Sussex. Actually, uh, Dr. Mahesh was recommended to us by a few experts that he is very right person coming from a mix of technology and policy background. Because as you know, privacy is not purely a technical topic. And today we are also fortunate to have two speakers with us. Uh, Mr. Udo Scala, Head of Google Competence Center, IoT Privacy, QV Rhineland. And uh, Mr. Gunter Martin, CTO, CEO, Privacy, QV, Rhineland. And as some of you must have noticed that we have done one webinar in past with QV, Rhineland already with Kalyan Bama. So as you know, it's a German testing lab who has a lot of capabilities in dealing with standards topic. And uh, uh, of course, we look forward for the presenters today to educate us you know how they are dealing with this topic of privacy but if uh, if i may present briefly our speakers today so udo brings a wealth of experience from management positions in large and medium enterprises he held several positions at Deutsche telecom ag and t systems as a member of the board of technisch uh, he has he was responsible for r d strategy and sales so technisch art, i think in german means consumer electronics udo can correct me if I'm wrong. Regarding Gunter Martin, he is the CTO for the same center, uh, which is Global Center of Excellency of IP Privacy at QB Rhineland. In this position, he is responsible for the development of certificates and other services in the field of IoT data protection and data security. Mr. Martin started his professional career with a major manufacturer of IT systems and then spent 20 years in various management roles at Deutsche Telekom and T-Systems. He served as a vice president responsible for the development and marketing of e-business solutions. His professional background is in IT development and marketing. 2000, he founded uh, Cordev GmbH together with Udo Scala. So there you go. So our two speakers are in some way connected already. Cordev became known in 2016 as the best German startup of the smart home industry awarded by the Federal Ministry of Economics. The company received the award for its certificate for protected privacy. So I think we have very right experts uh, for today. There is more to Mr. Gunter's background, but let me stop here and you know, invite Mr. Mahesh Uppal to open the webinar and uh, uh, we look forward to hear from our experts. So over to you, Mr. Mahesh. Thank you, Sachin. Thank you very much. Uh, friends, uh, welcome to this webinar on a testing framework for IoT privacy. Uh, uh, my name is Mahesh Upal. It's a pleasure to connect with you. We are seeing an explosive growth in IoT. Millions of devices, sensors, terminals can monitor and track our diverse activities and conditions. This has had intensified concerns about privacy and security. What happens, what happens if an, an unauthorized person gains control of a medical sensor, your private data, information about your finances, sexuality, family, children, etc.? 
You might even recall that in a popular TV show, terrorists were able to hack into the heart pacemaker of a U.S. vice president. These are serious matters. These are issues of concern, both in, uh, in terms of safety as well as security. Security and privacy are, of course, different. Security does not guarantee privacy. A secure system would be difficult to hack or compromise, but what if those in charge of the system or with access to the stored information shared it themselves? However, security and privacy are intertwined. An insecure network cannot protect privacy. Uh -huh. Experts have struggled with network security for decades. Much has been achieved to protect networks, devices, applications, etc., from being compromised. However, a lot remains to be done. We have, on the other hand, we have relatively less experience in systems to protect privacy. But the concerns are both important as well as urgent. Several regulatory agencies and governments have acted to address these concerns. The, the GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation of the EU, is perhaps the most comprehensive attempt to create a data protection framework for countries of the EU. India, too, is in the process of creating a data uh, protection regime. There is much talk about certification that devices connect to networks, connected to networks. Will India's networks be more secure if data is stored within the country? This webinar will deal with many of these issues. We have distinguished to address many of these issues. Our presenters, Dr. Rudo Scala and Ginter Martin, are expert practitioners. They have a unique insight proposed you. Our experts will deal with the implications of GDPR for countries outside Europe. They will deal with both the basics of the issue as well as the practical aspects of implementing C work. We will uh, we'll now start with a presentation from the experts and throw the discussion open to your questions after that. So over to you, uh, uh, to Udo and uh, Gunta. Thank you. Uh, before uh, you start, uh, I just want to announce that uh, the, after the presentation, we will take the questions, but there is a question stack to which you can already write your questions. So don't hesitate to write questions as they come, but our experts will only take the questions once the presentation is over. So over to you, Udo yeah. and Martin. Uh -huh. Yes, thank you very much for this nice introduction. My name is Udo Skala from TÜV Rheinland. Um, I find this all very interesting, though I'm working now quite a long period of time with manufacturers and service operators um, on the issue of uh, IoT. And for me, the most important thing is that we have to understand as soon as you con con uh, connect with your um, uh, analog equipment, if it is lighting or whatsoever, uh, sensors, and you connect it to the Internet, you are more or less getting an IT company. And what does it mean when you're getting an IT company? And also, um, it is very important when we uh, have an understanding what privacy is, then we have country by country, different regulations and uh, the use of data. For, for example, political issues, how do I want to use the data? Uh, and this is country by country very different. I hope that we could uh, give you some uh, interesting uh, insights. My name is Günther Martin. I'm on the left-hand side of this picture. Um, yes, I'm the CTO in the IoT Privacy Excellence Center. Uh, I have a master degree in computer science and my passion is how to execute the GDPR in real life with real products. If you look uh, what we have in our hands there, we have there two IoT devices smart light bulbs connected with the internet. They transfer not only light, but also a huge amount of data. Uh, you will learn our seminar uh, when this is privacy data, and if so, how to handle the data, not only for bulbs, but for all kinds of IoT. But first of all, I'd like to give you a short introduction about TÜV Rheinland, who we are. 
TÜV Rheinland is a huge testing organization uh, based in Germany, in Cologne. We have about 20,000 employees worldwide and 58% of them are working outside of Germany. We made almost 2 billion uh, sales in the last year. 50% of them were generated abroad. Abroad means we have over 500 offices in 69 countries. And one of the very important countries for us is India. Uh, we uh, start operations in India uh, already in the past millennium, which means in 1996. Uh, our headquarter is in Bangalore and we have about 21 offices throughout the country because the market in India is so exciting. When you go to the IoT market in India, then you see there a huge development. So we will see a tri trillion business in the next five to seven years. And um, we will have lots of combined businesses which will begin with IoT, which have to do with machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, cyber security issues. We have already uh, nearly 1,000 um, startups uh, in India which are uh, working in the IoT area. So uh, um, this is very important to see because I think we all have to understand that all these IoT companies are mainly working international. So if you are a manufacturing hardware or you have a service, you try to get that business uh, through the internet into the international market. And that means um, even if you are a small or medium-sized company in India, you have to know which regulations and which requirements to have to meet in the international market. Next page. So um, we have heard it already that we have to just distinguish between IoT data security and IoT privacy. Uh, we need to explain this a little bit in detail because this is the most important thing that we clearly understand what is data privacy, when is privacy involved, because then we have an understanding of the further a deeper uh, requirement of the GDPR. Next page. Um, we, I have here a definition which I like very much. So what is IoT data protection? By the end, we only talk about user behavior. So privacy data is all about user behavior. I give you one example which makes it easier. If you have an analog light nowadays, you have a switch and a light. 98% of all lights are still analog. There is no personal data involved. But if you now connect this system to an IoT system, to a smart home system, and you have a sensor instead of a switch, which is connected to a gateway, the gateway is giving the information to the internet, then you out of a sudden do know who is living in the room, who is owning the room, who is in the hotel room, is somebody using the light, in which color is he using it, and this is all user behavior, because now you understand if there's somebody in, is he, was he in for the last three weeks or not, and, and you can create just out of, out of the same thing, in an analog world, there's no data involved, no personal data, but in a connected world, you have user behavior. So this is, for me, the most important uh, uh, thing which we have to understand because normally people think this is just technical data. I just switch a light on. But by the end, in combining this information to who is living in this house, who is the owner, who is uh, booking the hotel room, we are getting to a personal data. So this is, for me, the main thing which we are talking about today. If it comes to security, we just have to protect that nobody has unauthorized access and nobody can change the data. So these are the three things which we have to have in mind. So one thing is privacy is user behavior, data security is unauthorized access and no change of data. And 
when we talk about IoT privacy, it's always a combination of both. It's about data protection and about data security. And um, mainly, this is all what it is about. So if you integrate these three arguments, which we have seen here on this page, in all of your thinking, in the product development, then getting, it's getting much, much easier. Next page. There's an exciting development um, on the market. Common products go online and become IoT. <clears throat> Here are some examples. In the households, uh, we already mentioned uh, <clears throat> the lightings, connected lights communicate when it, in what colors they are used. Uh, but not only lighting, also household appliances like washing machines, even lawnmowers, smart TVs, a very big market, thermostat, webcams, or the total smart homes. There is a um, um, research by Gartner, uh, and they predict that in five years, a typical US household will, about, will have about 500 IoT devices in operation, 500. But not only in the household, also in the mobile sector. Uh, you can see a car as an IoT device on four wheels with many, many IoT features like emergency call, handling charging stations, or the navigation systems, not only for cars, but also for bicycles, are connected with the internet. A huge and increasing market are wearables and health. You all know the fitness tracker or the glasses. There are additional uh, developments in the health sector. For example, IoT operated insulin pumps with very sensitive personal data from and insert into the body. We speak about smart toys. For example, the smart teddy with microphone and, and camera, the smart doll or the baby phone. Perhaps you know that the doll Kalia cannot be sold in Europe anymore because of unsecured microphone and camera. And there are some gadgets like pet bowl and even hairbrushes are already connected to the internet. Many of these IoT products and services come from India or will come from India and are exported uh, to Europe. And uh, if so, you have to know something about the GDPR. The GDPR uh, in the European Union was uh, applied from 25th of May, so it's now about uh, seven, eight months ago. And the GDPR includes privacy and security uh, roles. Uh, the GDPR affects all IoT products that process personal data. What does personal data mean? The definition in the GDPR is uh, personal data are all data with information about a natural person or an identifiable natural person. For example, uh, information about the person in its data record, that's obvious, personal user logins, but even IP addresses. Even a dynamic IP address is a personal data. Well, this is very important in the consumer sector. For the consumer, his home is his private sphere, his castle. Data about personal behavior will be connected by the devices, as Udo explained uh, just before, and this uh, is concerns privacy. For example, the thermostat with programmable room temperature, the video audio controller, or domestic appliance data. Of course, the GDPR is not only valid for consumers, it's valid for all persons whose personal data are collected. So if you are in the role of an employee um, and there is, for example, user recognition through logins or activation of setup mode and maintenance mode or operation of machine, uh, all this data can be personal data as soon as it can be technically assigned to someone who is executing this action is this our personal data. 
Um, I mentioned the, the GDPR and I want to give you a yeah, the short overview um, about the highlights uh, of the GDPR. Uh, the most famous one, I think, uh, are the increased fines. If you break the law, you have to pay up to 20 million euro, 20 million euro, or 4% of your total sales per year. Uh, the GDPR has not only increased fines, uh, also the size increased. For example, in Germany, the old uh, German uh, data protection uh, regulation has about 32 pages. The new one has 110 pages. So you see there is much more regulated than before. Important for you, the GDPR is international relevant. The GDPR must be followed by all providers offering a product or service in the United uh, in the EU. This is independent of where the provider is manu product is manufactured or the service is provided. So, for example, if you in India deliver products or services from India to Germany, the GDPR applies. Point four. Processing of personal data is prohibited unless it is explicitly permitted. Uh, the permission can be achieved by consent with the user. That the user can give a consent, he needs information. And you have to provide this information in a very transparent way. So you have the obligation to provide information. Users have new and additional rights. For example, the right of data portability, which means getting his data in a portable format. Or the right to erase, to be forgotten, which means to delete his data. To achieve this, there are technical and organizational measures uh, needed in your company. There are, point nine, two new principles, privacy by design and privacy by default. We will see this later. And last not least, uh, there is no certification mandatory for the GDPR, but it's uh, highly recommended by the law itself. Uh, I want to mention, uh, you can get our slides from this presentation and our slides include an appendix in which these GDPR points are explained in deeper detail. But now I, we want to go and to come to the confusion about the GDPR. So um, if you are looking into the market and when you uh, are going into discussion with uh, marketing, with CEOs, uh, with IT, there's really a lot of confusion about, I would not say about confusion about GDPR, it is about confusion about privacy. Because we have learned in the last uh, decade what security is, so we understand that when somebody is hacking data, but frankly spoken, there was not enough thought with uh, what is uh, privacy. Therefore, it's now very interesting, if you go to the next page, um, we should clearly understand that privacy is a human right. So the GDPR is now, now one of the most complex uh, privacy regulations, but we see worldwide now a bigger awareness coming up with privacy. So there is the California Act, there is in Taiwan, it's PIPA, there is in India the development for privacy, there will be privacy in act in, uh, in China, we have in Brazil a delivery. So um, it is important to understand how do I implement privacy and why is the GDPR nice? Because in the GDPR, I would say, this is a blueprint for the worldwide regulation and therefore it is not a bad idea to start with the GDPR even you are not using European data because in general coming back to the original point you have you have to have an understanding of what is the personal behavior what do you have to do to protect the data that nobody can attack it and nobody can change it so a big mistake you can do is when you underestimate the time and cost so if somebody tells you you're getting compliant with the whole company in two weeks, just throw him out of your company. 
So there, this is not a short issue, though it will take time. I would say if you have not thought about it, it will take you one to two years, though that you are working on it. But we have recommendations what you can do to start immediately. So the GDPR is only for me one um, one directive, and uh, we have to see that uh, international there will be a lot of uh, regulations coming up. Next page. Why? Why do we have to distinguish between manufacturer and service operators? You will see these uh, nice small companies like the Amazons and others which are going to produce services. They sell you a service, they sell you smart home systems, and you will have hundreds of manufacturers. So there are hundreds of uh, drone manufacturers, robot manufacturers, lighting manufacturers, medical devices. And the biggest problem is they maybe have not thought about just what happens with their IoT product. But it is very important to understand if an IoT camera, for example, is recording data. So it has, has the use of a digital video recorder. And then the, you can decide, is this digital video recorder implemented in the product itself, or do I record on the cloud server? So we have to have an understanding which data is exchanged between the service operator and the manufacturer. And everybody in this value chain is responsible for its own part. So in the, in the one example, a service operator is selling a smart home system where you have an IP camera integrated, then he is responsible for collecting this data. But the manufacturer may be decided to store some personal data in the device then it's not easy to discuss this because, um, for one example, if you want to erase data, so then you, the service operator has to have a full understanding which features the manufacturer did implement in the product. Next page, please. So, for us, it is very important that at the beginning of a product management cycle, so that then you discuss about security and about privacy. Because normally you just begin to repair, a product is ready, a service is ready, and then you want to implement privacy and security. Mm -hmm. This can work, in most cases it does not work. So uh, the main, uh, important, uh, the main points are, please think about to minimize the personal data. Data you don't collect, you do not have to take care about. So please minimize the data. Second, identify which personal data you're getting, classify it, and also um, make a user-friendly interface so that uh, you can interact with uh, the consumer, with the user, because he maybe wants to erase the data or transfer the data. In kind of security, think about deeply, how do you encrypt personal data? You have to make sure that nobody can attack this data. And your security technology must be just robust. Next slide. So if you ask me what are the next steps and what should you do because there's a high risk and high fines, 20 million and 4% worldwide revenue, so this is a risk for your board and your board has to understand it. This is no longer something for just the IT department. There we can recommend three initial steps which you can start to do from today. Please, the first thing is document the types of data you have. Please think about who is getting your data and where. And frankly spoken, sometimes you will be surprised because you are maybe having OEM partners. And your OEM partner uh, is also having different cloud systems worldwide. So normally companies I work with do not have a clue which data they collect in which manner, in which um, country, and how do they define technical data or personal data. So when you begin now to define what is data, what is personal data, and you have a clear documentation, this will help you dramatically. Second thing, just increase your logging and monitoring efforts. 
Yeah, so if you invest there, this is well invested money. Um, number three, um, you you have to understand that you need a clear customer interface. So um, you you have to be able to erase data to communicate with the user. So I would say these are the three initial steps you should take. So I would like to continue with uh, our recommendations now in a very practical way. Uh, the GDPR is a law, it's a formal text, but how to implement the GDPR in real life, in real products, in real service. And therefore, I have here for you some recommendations for your IoT device for the hardware. Uh, the IoT device is surrounded by a service. We give you recommendations for the IoT service. Very heartily is, uh, heartily is consent. Uh, we give recommendations how to achieve consent and how we can do this. And last not least, recommendation for certification. Let's look uh, at the device, at the product itself. These are our, yes, let's say, top 10 uh, recommendations um, or technical uh, points. Um, the most, or one of the most important point is encrypted data transmission from the device to the gateway and second, also from the gateway to the internet. So encrypted data transmission is extremely important and there is a special uh, paragraph in the GDPR handling encrypted uh, communication. In, mace, in most cases, encryption is not enough. Uh, you should look at technical correct, temporal correctness, freshness by using sequence numbers or sequence identification codes. This was the first point, uh, data transmission Yes, correctness and uh, encrypted. The second big point is uh, your device should have the feature for remote updates. You can have a secure device now, but it can become unsecure in the future. You have to control the device about the whole life cycle. So the device should have these remote update features. Other points. Point five, the device can be reset to factory settings. For example, if you get back the device for repair services, the user should have the ability to reset this to factory settings or if the user sells the device to another one. If removable storage devices like USB can be used, the data on them must be stored in encrypted form. If the user can or must register, this is a usual case. The device, uh, uh, the user must have the ability in a simple way for deregistering. This is the uh, area of uh, right to be forgotten. Um, point eight is data minimization. The device only saves or transmit the data needed to provide the service. And this corresponds with point nine, the device only contains the sensors and other components needed for its function on to provide the service. And last not least, if you build devices for outdoor usage, the device should have an anti-theft protection. These are our recommendations for the devices. Our recommendations for the Surrounding services are, first of all, the password. Uh, there should be a password protected access with individual password. And the best practice is to deliver the product already with individual passwords. There's an open web application security project worldwide, and they have developed uh, very good uh, techniques for security mechanism uh, you should use. You can read this in OWASP in the internet or we can provide you with this uh, mechanism. The law says you have to have the ability to detect data breaches and to report within 72 hours in three days. So you should have the process in line uh, to do this. 
And these processes are part of point four, the patch and vulnerability management and the ability to load security updates. Earmarking or appropriation and consent uh, yeah, is mandatory with the prohibition of coupling. So you cannot couple your contract with the user for one service with the agreement to other uh, services. We already mentioned the user has the right to be forgotten, so to delete his data. So you should have the technical features in line to delete the data. And not only you, but also the other third parties. Um, the right to be forgotten means if you have forwarded the uh, data of a user to third parties, you must notify the third parties concerns that such data has also been deleted by them. It should be possible, point eight, for the user to control and delete sound and image recordings. For example, you can see this with uh, Amazon Alexa or OK Google. Uh, they have both an app. And with this app, you can hear all instructions you have given by voice to the uh, loudspeaker assistance systems, and you can delete them. The user has the right to data portability in a general common format. So if you, the user requests to get his data, uh, you should have the process in place to give the data to him. And last not least, and this is obvious, the physical security of the computer center for access to the hardware resources. Our heartily recommendation oh. for consent comes from you, Udo. Yeah, so um, we have to speed up a little bit. Therefore, um, here is a recommendation for consent. But for me, the main point is when we talk about consent, when you discuss this with legal colleagues, with your GDPR experts, you often hear the question, what can I do? Uh, what is allowed by the GDPR? And I think if you switch the question and wherefore do you use the data, what is the reason? And then you explain this to a consumer, wherefore do you need the data? Then it's getting easier and you minimize your effort. Next page. So we decided to have uh, um, um, two certifications which are based on the European regulations. So we said we have an IoT product where we mainly have to look what are the hardware, the firmware doing, uh, is there a proper documentation, uh, what's the use of the data. And on the cloud service, on the IoT service, there the main uh, work is we have to understand the organization, what is the processes, what are the processes, for example, are you able to inform the authorities within 72 hours, how do you manage external party handling, have you thought about if you buy uh, some uh, software modules or some ships included software, did you check what this unit is doing. So um, IoT is always a combination of hardware, app and cloud. Next slide. So if you go to Europe and uh, you see what's going on with the GDPR, um, there are already several, several, hundred, of, uh, several hundred claims. Uh, I have taken here just an example from Ireland and from Germany. So uh, in total, we are having already several thousand claims. Um, and also the first uh, two court cases. So one was um, in regard with uh, Special Forces Police in the UK. Uh, how they use the data. Another one was um, for uh, publishing uh, um, option pictures. So it begins that the courts are getting and uh, picking up the situation, and um, we will uh, shortly see a lot of more court cases coming up. In the last part of our presentation, we like to give you an overview of some key privacy and security concepts for IoT. I think you have already learned that you can't have privacy without security and that privacy and security are continual and iterative, not only just one time point, it is continual. 
As a GDPR touches, touches many aspects of IoT security and privacy. For example, privacy by design, as already mentioned, secure software development, security testing, risk management, incentive management, vulnerability management, third party management, and user documentation. We would like to give you um, some hints uh, for some of these uh, points. So, for example, for the secure software development. Uh, secure software development requires a secure software development lifecycle policy over the whole, whole life cycle of the product. Document a secure coding and platform standard and train all developers, including contractors, on secure coding standard. You should uh, have platform regular code reviews. So in all software development is not just producing lines of code. It is a demanding and creative work and the base for data security and protection. The other base is security testing. Uh, test security uh, extensively um, not only one time, but during the whole lifetime cycle at scheduled gates. Um, we recommend pen penetration testing to identify vulnerabilities, penetration testing in two areas. Penetration testing against the device itself, can I come into the device with hacker methods, and penetration testing against the IoT service on the server. And of course, you should revise this testing and schedules as needed. If you put all this together, we are talking about risk management. So um, please start to document the data of data use, um, monitor the third party, what are they doing with the patches and the updates. Um, you have to create uh, and maintain threat models in the incident management, are you able to report data breaches within 72 hours? Are you able to inform the authorities? And these are things which you have to think about it. And vulnerability management, uh, again, are you sure and do you know what the parties are doing, which patches and updates? And do you uh, monitor uh, the, um, the, the events of um, hacking, et cetera, et cetera? Um, one, one, the most maybe the, the most critical point is on the next page, the third party management. And there you can easily see uh, that it is not so easy to understand um, what is a, a ship, for example, doing. If you buy a ship and you integrate it with a module, maybe you have not tested the software which is embedded. So, um, and then it comes also to the, the, the combination of different cloud systems. Who is get, getting which personal data and how do you transfer it from the one cloud to the other cloud? And uh, these are really getting very critical issues and you have to manage this as well. User documentation sounds easy, but by the end it is not. Because first of all, you have to have an understanding which data you have, and then you have to, understand, to have a user documentation which really describes in an, um, in an easy manner what are you doing with the data, um, how do you secure the data, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now we come to our last page. Yes, so we end. Oh, sorry, Udo, for you. Oh well, yeah, we just give uh, uh, it back to the uh, uh, to the moderator. Yeah, so uh, uh, we had some issues uh, connecting with Mr. Mahesh uh, over the yeah. computer. So, Mr. Mahesh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay, perfect. I can hear you very well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So please yeah. go can ahead. Can you hear me? Uh, your questions, yes, we can hear yeah. you well, please. Perfect, perfect. Uh, thank you, Udo and Gunter, for a, a very wide-ranging, very, uh, very masterly presentation of something which is very complex and very, uh, not just complex, but also has huge implications for both individuals as well as companies. 
maybe I can set the, uh, the uh, get the ball rolling by asking a, a more general question, uh, Udo and Ginta. And the question is this: that uh, as you can, as you also mentioned, that for, there have been hundreds of complaints from various affected parties already relating to uh, the GDPR. And now the kind of recommendations that you have will imply efforts at a huge scale across the world, especially, for example, uh, the Indian IT industry. Now, the question is, uh, do you think that the GDPR uh, regulations can be enforced on the scale at which uh, we will see the effort uh, in this regard, efforts regarding privacy and security. Because to do this for a small number of players in a small area, small countries, is one thing. But can GDPR be effectively enforced in countries as large as India and with, the, uh, with communities as large as the Indian IT community? Um, yeah, thank you very much for that question. I think we have to go to the core of the GDPR, and this will be a world. This is, is a worldwide understanding. So maybe the complexity of the GDPR is the one or the another point, maybe too complex. But the core to understand which data you are collecting, the which, how do you protect the data? Nobody can change the data, and you build consent with the consumer, and uh, uh, you you use this to um, go into your product management, you go into your IT, begin the discussion, wherefore do you need this data? And then I would say, if you have done this, you are already 60% fine. If you have to comply to GDPI completely in any of the 100 pages, I would say this is not the most important thing. The most important thing is that the worldwide community thinks about the human right of privacy. And privacy is all about personal behavior. It's all about making thinking about where for do I take the data and then being very open with the consumer and telling him that is the data I, knew, uh, I, I, I need, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to work with. And then, then I would say this is what will be worldwide similar. So the GDPR is maybe now in the draft a little bit too big. This could be reduced in the one or the other issue, but the core idea is already complex enough because we have to see that companies did not think about privacy in a deep manner. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from our audience uh, in the webinar? Uh, uh, Sachin, do we have any that have been uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, presented? So I, yes. So if you allow me, Mr. Mahesh, even oh. I have a question to ask. Wonderful. So, Go ahead. Uh, so Gunter and Udo, I I looked at uh, your recommendations and I thank you for the wonderful presentation again. I have shared in chat uh, with everyone the report of Enisa on baseline baseline security recommendations. That's just uh, you know for information. But I have this one question which you. Uh, made a recommendation that if there is a removable media in an IoT device, then the data at rest should be stored encrypted. Is that correct? Yes, this is correct. I just opened the, 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 the slide. Number five, and, number six. And, the, and this is number, number six, yes. So I'm just, uh, let's say I'm a bit more familiar with, uh, let's say, medical device security. Oh. And I have seen, uh, at least in healthcare, uh, the regulation is HIPAA, for example. Yes. And and we have seen many, uh, you know, big data leaks in US, in big hospitals, and they could have been prevented if the data at rest was encrypted. It's just that the standard doesn't mandate, or the regulation doesn't mandate data at rest to be encrypted the largest of the hacks like Equifax, you know, have resulted in leaking of data in plain text. Okay. So what is your view while you recommend this? Where do we stand in terms of a standard? 
Yes, the main point is uh, if you have data of persons that uh, live in Europe, and this is a European uh, law, um, the transmission of the data is has to follow some rules like encryption and transmission of data can be done by a, by a network but also by carrying uh, storage devices which are removable and that's the reason that also storage devices like USB uh, should have an encryption for personal data. Okay, thanks for clarifying but I think my question was when the data is being stored let's say in a hospital or in those scenarios, my understanding is that it is not stored encrypted. I'm not talking about transmission. And that is what is a, a big gap. When the hack happens, we, we lose all the data in plain text. So maybe it's not relevant here, but that was my question. Um, but, but please think about one thing is um, the attack does not come always in just one um, one uh, in one protocol way on the IP. So this the attack can be on your Bluetooth device. The attack can be via your wireless network. It can be coming via um, GSM phone. So um, the hack can come out of areas which you have maybe not thought about. Yeah. So uh, I mean, I need to give more time to participants to ask questions there are questions which i have assigned to gunter there is one question from Heman curry which says is gdpr laid to iot only or to software products too for example gmail and then there are two, two questions from andres somo so if you can confirm that you can uh, see the questions i request you to answer them uh, GDPR <coughs> does not only affect uh, IoT, uh, GDPR <coughs> affects data processing at all. Uh, so uh, data processing with IT, but even with paper. Uh, so we have two big areas. We have the enterprise IT, and the enterprise IT has to be GDPR compliant for example, handling data of employees and all this stuff. And the, and uh, for companies where that offer IoT, the GDPR applies for IoT. So the GDPR is not a special IoT law. Our webinar uh, today was IoT, so we focused on this, but GDPR is valid uh, for all kinds of data processing with personal data. You had a second question, Sachin? Yes, so there are two questions from Andres Soma, uh, Mr. Gunter. Yeah. One is, if a service is provided for Europe from India, meaning servers are located uh, in India, how can European law be enforced in India? In India, the Indian law is applicable. No, the in, you know the European GDPR. Furthermore, security standards, encryption, and requirements for cooperating with national security authorities in different are different in Europe and India. Does Europe have really the number of experts to monitor, control, and enforce violations? This is the first question. Okay. And there is one more question. So if you want me to read it out one by one, I can stop here, or you can tell me if I need read out the second one as well. Uh, Yes, a very short answer. Uh, if you offer a product or a service with, that breaks GDPR, you are not allowed to offer this in Europe. And if you do so, you break the law. Okay, so maybe that answers uh, Andreas' question. I read out his second question. He's saying, if I am a service provider in Europe with servers in Europe, example, a car manufacturer, and provide services in India, collecting data from the cars and store them on servers in Europe. Which law is applicable, European GDPR or Indian laws? Both laws might contradict each other with regard to level of encryption, lawful interception, etc. 
Um, let me take this. Uh, though, um, for Indian um, uh, people, you have to uh, meet the Indian law. For European people, you need uh, to match the European law. So there's no way um, and um, yeah. to change this. I, I guess if you compare both um, privacy laws, then they are in general 80% the same. This is a positive thing. Yeah. Okay. So I think uh, thank you for answering them. So I go back to Mr. Mahesh Uppal. Uh, if, if you may have any further questions, otherwise uh, I can go ahead and uh, thank you all. So Mr. Mahesh. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Sachin. Yes, I don't have uh, many more questions, but I think what Udo and uh, Gunter have shown us is the range of issues that can arise and some of the questions that the that our uh, audience has asked are already indicating the kind of concerns there might be including the concerns relating to enforcement both in india as well as uh, in uh, in the european union much of this will in my opinion be unraveled in the coming uh, months and uh, one hopes that eventually the goals of the GDPR, which is to protect security and privacy, can in fact be met, the objectives achieved, and hopefully you and I and everybody else can uh, can benefit from a secure and uh, a secure IoT environment, which addresses all our security and privacy concerns. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I would now like to acknowledge uh, uh, the contributions of all three experts, uh, Mr. Mahesh Upal, Mr. Gunter Martin, Mr. Udo Skala. Thanks for educating us. And uh, we here at Indo India European uh, ICT Standards Collaboration Project regularly organize these kind of webinars. So uh, we are grateful to you. And I hope uh, this conversation when publicly shared uh, on our project website will lead to more such conversations and since you have shared there your details contact details i encourage uh, participants who are not uh, able to ask their questions right now might reach out to the experts and i hope you don't mind that and uh, also Thank we you. will be sharing the slides uh, on the project website i hope that is okay uh, with you. Sure. Yeah. So with that, I conclude the webinar for today. And I also thank the participants for joining us. And feel free to write to us on uh, topics that might be of interest to you that we should cover in this webinar series. So have a nice day. All thank, of you. You. Thank, you. thank 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 you.